Good afternoon, Peace America, Canada, and the Bahamas. Welcome to our Feast Online. We would like to invite you to like our Feast at Home, North America, and the Bahamas. People of God, in two weeks' time, we will be celebrating Pentecost Sunday. Allow me and my co two preachers today to talk to you about the Holy Spirit, the third person in the Trinity. I would like to begin by highlighting the importance of the Holy Spirit in our lives and in our church. As a matter of fact, the birth of the church happened on Pentecost Sunday, when the Holy Spirit descended on Jesus Christ's disciples, and I will share more on that later. My dear friends in the Lord, in the New Testament, the Holy Spirit was mentioned almost 90 times. Wow! That shows how important the role of the Holy Spirit plays in our lives. At this point in time, allow me to share with you the role of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Our main Bible verse was taken from John chapter 16, verse 7, which was shared with you by Ben. It was clearly mentioned by Jesus Christ to his disciples that the Holy Spirit is our helper. He promised to send them the Holy Spirit who will teach them and make them remember all the things that he told them. Why in the first place Jesus Christ told them this? If we look at two chapters earlier, Jesus Christ was telling his disciples that he would soon leave them. Allow me to read to you John chapter 14 verses 1 to 3. The Word of God says, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God and believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have not told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. Powerful. You see, my dear brothers and sisters, the disciples were so afraid because Jesus Christ would be leaving them soon. But brothers and sisters, to remove that fear, Jesus Christ mentioned something in the latter part of the chapter. And I will read to you verse 16. He told them, and I will pray the Father and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. Now, my dear brothers and sisters, I believe that when Jesus Christ told his disciples this, they were at peace. And two chapters after John 16, in John 18, Jesus Christ was arrested. Jesus Christ knew the tremendous fear his disciples would face, so he repeatedly promised his disciples the Holy Spirit. Now, people of God, in those two passages, Jesus Christ mentioned categorically that the Holy Spirit is the helper. Now let's look at God's vocabulary when it comes to the word helper. There's an enormous difference between God's definition of the word helper and the world's definition of the word helper. When the world says helper, it is to put down a person and label him or her as inferior. But when God says helper, it is an offer of help done in agape love. So my best description of a helper is this. Someone called alongside to help with unconditional love. This can be best, best illustrated by two oxen yoked together, plowing the same field and moving to one direction. I'll show the picture now. So we can ask the Holy Spirit to work in our lives and receive his gifts and his fruits, each a different purpose. The purpose of the gifts of the Holy Spirit is to build up and encourage the church. We can use the gifts for evangelization. A brother will share with you on this later. The purpose of the fruits of the Holy Spirit is to help us live our Christian life. I believe we need them for personal holiness. More importantly, we need the fruits of the Holy Spirit so that people will know we're God's disciples. Jesus said in John chapter 13, verse 35, 
By this, everyone will know that you're my disciples if you have love for one another. The first fruit of the Holy Spirit. Another brother will talk to you about the fruits of the Holy Spirit later. Allow me to share with you the incident when I first felt the power of the Holy Spirit working in my life. I joined the Light of Jesus Prayer Meeting in 1982 when I was invited by Tito Jean, the father of Bo, who was my boss in our company to attend the family prayer meeting. Of course, being the boss, I could not refuse him. So I brought Bebo to me. A week later, he brought both of us to a weekend Light in the Spirit seminar. So I started serving both Light of Jesus and the other community for about a month. One day, an elder of that other community asked me to join her in one ministry and she told me that God told her last night that God gave me the gift of wisdom and knowledge. So she told me, join me in that ministry only to find out later that that ministry was speaker's ministry. You see, brothers and sisters, after the break in the morning, I left. I told Bebo, let's go. And Bebo asked me why. Because I was asked to join the speaker's ministry. I told her, speaking is not my gift. So we went back and served only light of Jesus prayer meeting. Few months later, Bo told us that he would convert the prayer meeting into a community and he would form a group of speakers who will give Life in the Spirit seminar. So the following week, he announced the speakers and my name was included. And I told the Lord, oh, not again. So after that, I told Bo, I told him, I cannot join the group of speakers and he asked me why i told him both public speaking is my waterloo in my first year of college first semester i got 79 in public speaking i could have graduated modesty aside cum laude without a line of seventh grade in that public speaking a grade of 79. so i told Bo, oh, no i cannot i cannot be a speaker and Bo told me, well, God chose you. If you refuse me, you don't refuse me, you refuse God. So I was bothered. So that night I prayed and I heard the song, not by might nor by power, but my spirit says the Lord. So I researched, I looked for it. And I found it in Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6. Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6 says, not by might nor by power, but my spirit says the Lord. I learned later that those were the words of an angel to Zechariah of God's plan. God's plan was this, to help his people finish the temple and reestablish the Jewish state. And the angel told Zechariah, not by your power, not by your might, but by the Spirit, says the Lord. Brothers and sisters, it hit me so hard. And right there, I prayed to the Lord. I told the Lord, Lord, I'm not a speaker, but if you want me to become a speaker, Lord God, let your Holy Spirit take control of me. So the following week in our prayer meeting, I told Bob, Bob, call me in. So a few months later, we gave the first Life in the Spirit seminar to 40 students of a public school in Cubao. The first speaker was Bob. While he was giving the talk of God's love, you know what the students did with their band paper that they're supposed to write their notes? They made an airplane made of paper and they were flying it all around and we were all distracted. So during the break, the teachers told them to behave. So the second speaker gave the talk on salvation. While he was speaking, they formed a bullet out of the paper and they were started hitting each other. And I was praying to the Lord, I will be the third speaker, Lord God. By that time I give the talk, they might be killing each other. So when my turn came, I spoke about new life. I told them I was a revengeful son. I told them that I joined rallies. I told them, Ibagsa ang pasismo, imperialismo, feudalismo. And I told them, I didn't know. 
The problem is, ako mismo. They started laughing. I was able to connect to them. And in the middle of my talk, when I was sharing my bag, they started crying. And after my talk, the teachers told me, Brother Pio, the turning point was your talk. You were anointed. You were blessed. I thank the Lord. And you told the Lord, Lord, with the power of the Holy Spirit. And you started preaching the Word of God. I started giving talks around the Philippines, Asia, here in North America. And I'm now here in North America, still preaching the Word of God in any part of the world. You see, my dear brothers and sisters, I thank the Holy Spirit for giving me the wisdom and the knowledge to preach the Word of God. Some of you, brothers and sisters, may be invited by God to do some ministry for Him. Some of you may be afraid, but I'd like to tell you this. When you're afraid, it's not by your power, it's not by your might, but by the Holy Spirit. He will see you through. And brothers and sisters, I would like to ask you this. Don't be contented with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Also ask for the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Why? Because the fruits of the Holy Spirit will make us holy. Allow me to make this last sharing. One day I received a call from a woman. She was frantic. She told me, Brother P, you were referred to me. And I'd like to talk to you. I am a habitual adulterer. So I asked her, come to the office. Anyway, in our office, there were many people around there, so it's safe to talk to her. So when she came in, wow, she was so beautiful and sexy. So she started talking about her former boyfriend. She told me that her husband is in Saudi and she feels lonely. And her former boyfriend started to contact her and they were having an affair for the past five or six months. And he told her, hey, you're married. That's adultery. And after talking to her for 45 minutes, she said, Brother Pio, I really want to break off with this habit. Please help me. Please pray over me. So I prayed over her. She started crying. And the other people in the office saw her. And then later on, she told me, Brother Pio, I would like to do it. But Brother Pio, please keep praying for me. I'm still weak. I told her, I remember the passage. Not by your might, not by your power, but by the power of the Holy Spirit. Rely on the power of the Holy Spirit and the fruit of the Holy Spirit, which is self-control. So she left. After one week, I received a call from her. And this is what she told me. Brother Pio, I was able to control it for six days but on the seventh day it was so lonely for me and he called me up he asked me to meet him in a place so i rode the bus when i was about 30 or 20 minutes away from the place i was praying hard i was telling oh lord please stop me from going there and suddenly, when she opened her eyes, she saw a man in front of him wearing a t-shirt. And the t-shirt says, not by your power, not by your might, but by the Spirit of the Lord. It jolted me. And the next bus stop, I went down, took another bus going back home. And Brother Pio, I'm still struggling, but getting better. A week later, she called me up again and said, Brother Pio, it's been two weeks. And I believe God is giving me the strength. About a month later, I bumped into her in the SM Mega Mall with my kids. And she told me, Brother Pio, a miracle happened just a week ago. My husband was promoted in his job. And he's now entitled to bring me to Saudi. I'll believe in next thing. So the following week, she called me up. She told me I'm at the airport. I'm excited to see my husband. And I thank God. And I thank the Holy Spirit 
for seeing me through. I am no longer an adulterous woman and I will love my husband even more. People of God, pray for the Holy Spirit to control your life. Pray for the gifts so that you can evangelize people, build up the church. Pray for the fruits for our own personal holiness. I'd like to ask a brother who will share to you about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. This young brother, a very dedicated servant, a handsome servant. I'd like to call on our brother Tyrone from our district, Rancho Cocomonga. <laughs> 